Monitoring ecosystem change is really crucial to actually understanding building confidence in the outcomes for Nature Positive. And it needs to be the ecosystem as a whole because it's that way that we can understand that we're improving the health of the environment. This whole area, the Mary River catchment, was affected very badly in the 2022 floods. We had record floods come through. The floods are getting worse. The dry times are getting worse that could potentially be a huge threat to some of our species. Our primary focus as BMRG is to invest with intent in this catchment. We really want to value and measure our natural assets. We've been lucky enough to tackle one of the big questions that we've been asking for 20 years. And that question is, where are our threatened species and where aren't they? Now, purpose was to go out and do a broad scale catchment assessment of the threatened species post flooding. And with that information, we'll be able to sort of guide investment on how we can build resilience in areas where there may be less than we were expecting. Make sure that uh, that funding is directed towards meaningful uh, environmental restoration. The key to the environmental accounting framework is having that standardization of methods that we measure across landscapes and species and projects that enables us to compare apples with apples. If we can bring our various expertise to the table, bring our resources, we can do a much better job than if we were working individually. So that's been the really the spirit of the collaboration. It is a really diverse region. We have a lot of different land uses and a lot of different land types. Monitoring is a massive part of what we do and the Biodiversity Monitoring Project was looking at ways to monitor biodiversity and baseline biodiversity for people who were thinking about entering um, biodiversity markets uh, at some point down the track so that they could get a better handle on what their existing biodiversity was on their property. GIS is a really important tool in our suite of science tools. So we use the um, geographic information systems and remote sensing to help us get information from really vast areas of land that would be really hard to cover um, on foot and in detail. So a lot of that remote sensing work is used to support decisions around um, all of our projects really. The existing data is really important as a tool to understand the trends and to give us that ability to look strategically at what's going on in the region and target our investment. We have a range of programs that we run, so we do a lot of sustainable agriculture projects. The project that we're working on that's around the sustainability frameworks is really about translating the framework indicators to on-ground practices. We're using the sustainable frameworks, Australian Agricultural Framework, the Cotton Sustainability Framework, Beef and Grains, pulled them all together, turned that into on-ground activities. Our role is really as an interpreter. What does that mean for you on your farm? And how can you start collecting some information and data around what you're already doing so that when you need to demonstrate that your business is sustainable, you have some kind of evidence to do that. NRM's a best place to support landholders to understand and embrace some of the opportunities coming up with carbon markets and also the sort of natural capital markets because we're the ones having the cups of tea. We're on the ground, we have the relationships and those relationships are built on trust and respect. The purpose of today was to show people of this region what the Mangrove Watch program is all about, whilst also collecting valuable data on the shoreline habitat condition in the Clyde River estuary. We got out on the waterway with a bunch of budding citizen scientists and we um, discovered what it takes to undertake these methodologies that allow us to look in more detail what is actually occurring with mangrove health around the foreshore. The data that we've collected today will be used to develop a report card of mangrove shoreline habitat condition for the Clyde River estuary. This data will then be used to identify three to five local action projects that can be developed to better protect mangroves in the Clyde River estuary and build future climate change resilience.